Hello everyone, this is Senior Biotech Analyst John Vandermosten. Welcome to our channel that educates the life sciences investor on exciting advancements in drugs, biologics, and devices. For more content and news like this, subscribe to our channel below and like or share with others. Welcome to our next segment of our conversation with Dr. Laxman Orion Bott, the CEO of Reviva Pharmaceuticals. The company just completed enrollment of a phase three trial in schizophrenia and expects to report top line data in October. So there are a number of ways to raise capital. You know, the Warren exercise is one, that's a great way um, to do it. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, going out in the market and raising, you know, doing equity raise. Uh, there's also partnerships um, and grants are, are other options there. Usually those grants are for earlier stage projects, which you have some sure. uh, of those. So how do, you, how do you think of all those different sources, those little pots of capital out there? How, how do you think um, you're going to access all those different areas? And what yeah. are you going to focus on? You know, as you mentioned, grants are uh, uh, generally, they are not uh, uh, large amount, the small amounts, early uh, stage programs. Mm -hmm. But certainly uh, in the neuropsychiatric space, you see uh, there are not many uh, products in the pipeline for treatment of schizophrenia or in general neuropsychiatry. So we believe uh, the positive uh, data, uh, if we have positive data in the phase three study, that could be uh, a catalyst, uh, not only uh, for the company in the field as well, uh, because a uh, neuropsychiatric space need a better treatment uh, mm -hmm. because huge unmet need. We believe, uh, uh, you know, not only for a, a partnering opportunities for Reviva, but uh, also uh, raising capital based on the positive outcome. There are multiple options available for a company. That's what we believe. Uh, we will, uh, uh, based on the outcome uh, of the top line data, and then uh, available opportunities, then uh, we will evaluate. But certainly we believe at the, as the market cap uh, goes up with the positive uh, data, if the data is positive, uh, certainly the warrant will get exercised. Mm -hmm. And right. then we have option to uh, raise additional capital through equity offering or through partnering. Uh, you know, there are interests from major pharma uh, in our uh, imagine, program. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, they're probably waiting to yeah. see that day, day Cut, next month, correct, right? Correct, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, you've got um, a lot of other programs that are, are a little bit behind the uh, schizophrenia program, a lot of phase two eligible uh, indications out there. Uh, if you are able to raise uh, money beyond what you need for the second phase three, what do you, um, what do you see working on in the rest of your portfolio, a little bit further downstream? Sure. You know, our plan is to, after this phase three uh, data readout, uh, if the data is positive, immediately start the second phase three study. Okay. That would allow us to clearly plan for NDA. Q4 is probably Q4, the likely Q4 timeline for that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that would allow us to, uh, you know, plan for NDA submission in schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. However, the data, uh, what we generated in the phase two, we believe if the phase three data is also in the similar line or even better, we would uh, start uh, other studies planned for major depressive disorder, especially ADHD. It's a huge unmet need. Uh, we would start the uh, phase two convertible phase three studies. Since we are completing phase three studies for uh, uh, schizophrenia and then uh, biloxazine has already been treated currently over 600 patients. Mm -hmm. When we complete the second phase so three, it will be data. over yeah. 1,400 patients. There is a good number of uh, patients with the database, safety database, as well as efficacy for the broader uh, spectrum. That would give us a, a good confidence to go directly phase two convertible phase three uh, for ADHD and then major depressive disorder. So the requirement for uh, additional, for these indications, we don't have to do a phase, phase two study. We can directly go to phase three. Mm. Since they are outpatient studies, the cost mm. of associated less with development, yeah. less expensive compared to schizophrenia. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, with a, a reasonable uh, uh, cost associated with this study, significantly lesser than schizophrenia, we can bring uh, an NDA application uh, if drug works in these conditions in a short span of time. Okay, so shifting back to the, the schizophrenia trial, um, you know, maybe it's a little bit too early since you haven't put out your top line data yet from the first one, mm -hmm. but how, what, how do you think the design will be in, the, um, in that trial? Will it be similar to recover or will you modify it a bit? Yes, it's a, if you look at the current uh, 
the pivotal study, what we, uh, you know, expecting top line data next month. The trial design is essentially similar what we have successfully completed in the phase two. Mm -hmm. And then that gives a, a lot of confidence uh, uh, for us as well as the regulatory agencies because you can compare the re reproducibility of the data uh, when you have the similar trial design that we mm -hmm. have currently. Mm -hmm. In the second phase three, uh, also we'll have the similar trial design. What we intend to do based on the knowledge or the data uh, coming out from this study, we would like to add, uh, fine tune the secondary endpoints, some of the secondary endpoints, especially the neuroinflammation and uh, like uh, uh, sexual side effect and then uh, 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 substance abuse. These are, mm. uh, uh, you know, very serious, yeah, uh, right. uh, you know, uh, comorbidities in this uh, patient population. So we would like to fine tune further those secondary endpoints in the second study that would help us to, uh, you know, appropriately position our drug in the market and then uh, uh, engage regulatory agencies for label claims. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are waiting for uh, the data readout to quickly start the second study. We will, okay. we will uh, make appropriate changes in the second uh, phase three uh, to address those uh, label claim requirements. Got it, got it. So, so you mentioned, you know, you're planning for a 4Q start to the second phase three. Um, how long do you think it might take to complete that? And when, when do you think we'll see the, the top line from the second phase three? So, you know, like uh, other companies, uh, once we complete the first phase three study, we in the second phase three, almost 90% uh, of the sites involved in this study, we will re-engage them mm -hmm. because they are familiar with the drug and then sure, protocol. Sure, so probably makes it a lot quicker. Often the up. second phase three study goes much quicker. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. historically, if you look at this type of studies are completed in about 14 to 16 months uh, time frame. Okay. So we believe by starting this one in Q4, we expect to complete the enrollment end of next year okay. and then give okay. the top line data early 2025 and then submit the NDA by end of uh, uh, you know, Q1 2025. For NDA uh, submission, we have completed most of the other studies required except the second pivotal study. We are either near completion or almost uh, completed most of those studies. And, and no doubt you'll finish those long before the, the second So phase we believe done, right? uh, the other requirements for a drug manufacturing, uh, you know, carcinogenesis study, and all other uh, package as a package for NDA, we expect to complete, including the long-term safety, in uh, mid of next year. And okay. then we believe, our, uh, except the second ongoing phase three, the NDA package will be almost ready in early okay. Q3. So you do a lot of things in parallel. Got right? it. Save Got some time. It. Um, just, just remind us when you started the first phase three. I'm going to try to calculate how long that one actually sure. took. Sure. You know, if, if you look at we dosed uh, first patient in the phase three study currently, you know, what we are going to complete end of January okay. 2022. Okay. So we remember at that time the COVID was still active. Sure, right. That you was know, still active. slowing things down. You know, many companies had a lot of difficulties in the enrollment. Not only we almost in general. Mm -hmm. So despite COVID and uh, all other uh, issues uh, in the global, like uh, uh, you know, in the European, most companies uh, do the trial in the Russia and Ukraine, the mm, COVID right, and then right. ge geopolitical issues, we were able to, uh, you know, when I say some of the issues in the due to COVID, uh, you know, many companies in this space had supply chain issues as well. Sure. So despite all these issues, we were able to make significant progress. Our originally set timeline to complete the, give the top line date of mid of this year. We mm -hmm. are just around a two to two and a half months behind the originally uh, planned uh, top line data. Considering all these uh, global issues and then COVID, uh, I believe uh, we did uh, uh, fairly well in advancing the study uh, mm -hmm. in this uh, glo global study. Yeah. So. Yeah, very good. I think right. the second study, uh, we believe uh, we should be in our plan is to give the top line it, data uh, in the Q1, early Q1. Okay, 25. 25. Yeah, it's always easier the second time. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, Dr. Bott. I appreciate you. it. Uh, again, we've had the CEO of Reviva Pharmaceuticals, Dr. Laxman Orion Bott, joining us here in the studio to talk about the company and Berlaroxazine. It's uh, a treatment for schizophrenia.